This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. The Bulletin of Atomic Scientists has advanced the Doomsday Clock to a new record, 100 seconds to midnight. It's their position that humanity has never been closer to destroying themselves. Now before the flames of the end of civilization wipe us all out, maybe we can squeeze in some roasted opinions about it. The Bulletin of Atomic Scientists have advanced their symbolic clock 20 seconds closer to midnight, to the closest position it's ever occupied to global Armageddon. They base this decision on several elements, the threat of nuclear war, global climate change, the influence of cybersecurity threats, and the deterioration of international politics. I'll post the link to their full statement in the description of this video, and I suggest that everybody take some time to read it. In summary, the world, in their opinion, is in a much worse place than it was two years ago. Read between the lines, though, and there is a name which is prominently absent yet springs to mind. Let's see if you agree with me on this one, and I quote, This situation, two major threats to human civilization amplified by sophisticated technology-propelled propaganda, would be serious enough if leaders around the world were focused on managing the danger and reducing the risk of catastrophe. Instead, over the last two years, we have seen influential leaders denigrate and discard the most effective methods for addressing complex threats, international agreements with strong verification regimes, in favor of their own narrow interests in domestic policy gain. By undermining cooperative, science and law-based approaches to managing the most urgent threats to humanity, these leaders have helped to create a situation that will, if unaddressed, lead to catastrophe sooner rather than later, unquote. Sounds like the BAS has regurgitated what the legacy media has been spouting all along, doesn't it? It's the end of the world as we know it. The end of human civilization. The end of life as we know it. There will be a mass extinction. Or there already is one ongoing. We're on the verge of a global war. The nukes are about to be launched. The balance of power is shifting and will forever rest with the oligarchs and despots. Unless we do something. Now! And what do we need to do? Vote for progressives, of course. Only progressives know how to solve the climate crisis, the political chaos, the medical threats, the international trade tensions, the problems with big tech, the rise of nationalism, the student debt crisis, the corporate debt crisis, income inequality, wealth inequality, social inequality. The progressives can solve all of these problems. And how? Why with progress, of course. Scientific progress, political progress, social progress. We have to keep making progress or the world will collapse. It makes sense to a lot of people, I know, especially people from the millennial generation. Progressivism has been incorporated into everyday life for millennials and the woke generation which followed them. Nothing was ever diverse enough, or woke enough, or progressive enough if it was done the way things were done in the past. And by past, in many cases I'm talking about five or ten years ago. I get it. The people who are coming of age now may not realize just how much progressive thought is out there and just how much of it is targeted at children. Any Harry Potter fan can tell you that Dolores Umbridge gave a speech which telegraphed the Ministry of Magic's intent to meddle in Hogwarts. But how many remember these words? And I quote, Progress for the sake of progress must be discouraged. Let us preserve what must be preserved, perfect what can be perfected, and prune practices that ought to be prohibited, unquote. Hermione Granger thoughtfully explained the meaning of Umbridge's words to all of us without ever pointing out that Umbridge was intended as a mockery of conservative thought in government. Oh, you think that perhaps I've gone too far with that comparison. I wonder why I make such a connection. Certainly no one else is drawing parallels between the villains of children's literature and the current elected leaders of countries all over the world, or are they? The millennials in the woke generation have been raised on a steady diet of progressivism. It's been happening since long before they were born, too. The public education system wasn't meeting the needs of every student, so progress was needed. They changed everything, from excluding logic and the debate process from the general education curriculum, 
to changing principles like the application of PEMDAS in Common Core education. They put as many classes as possible into online formats as well. This progress continued until parents couldn't easily assist their own children with their homework. Parents cannot therefore easily respond to the information presented to their kids based upon their own understanding and decisions. The information is on the internet, and today's kids are being taught to search the internet for whatever information they want. What they aren't being taught is how to evaluate the sources of the information for bias. Why should they? Snopes will do it for them, right? Never mind the bias which the fact checkers might have, because it's more important that people know what Snopes says is factual or false, and not why Snopes might have claimed that something is factual or false. Fact checkers never have an agenda, right? What all of this awareness has created is a never-ending menu of problems brought to the attention of the youngest generations. The millennial generation grew up thinking that no one knew about these problems. The woke generation is now growing up thinking that no one cares about these problems. No wonder the incidence rate of clinical anxiety disorders has grown. No, really. Look at the results of the epidemiologic catchment area program study conducted in the early 1980s in comparison to the National Comorbidity Survey replication completed in 2001 through 2003. Lifetime chances of developing an anxiety disorder have increased from less than 15% to more than 33% in the space of a generation. Now, it's easy to blame 9-11 for this increase, but that would be disingenuous. The generations born since 1980 have grown up in an era of heightened awareness, without regard to whether those kids could handle the stress of the awareness of all those problems, nor any effective efforts to arm them with any weapons against those stressors, but the notion that progressive measures were the answers to all their problems. Now, progress isn't a bad thing. New research, new ideas, and new solutions are good. But progressivism as a political movement isn't about solving problems, and it never has been. At its core, progressivism is about preserving the power of the government by convincing the population at large that only the government can solve a laundry list of problems, and anyone who doesn't want the government to solve these problems simply wants the world to collapse. Hence the advance of the doomsday clock to 100 seconds from midnight. It's not because the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists truly believes that nuclear war is going to happen any second now. It's because they have broadened their purview to include climate change and cybersecurity in their doomsday countdown. We have to accept that fossil fuel use and cyber terrorism are about to destroy humanity now, don't we? Because now they're considered just as much of a threat as mutually assured destruction was in the 1980s. I remember when climate change was trumpeted by Al Gore when I was in high school and college. By this year, Florida was supposed to be underwater and the Great Plains were supposed to be a desert. I also remember when hackers were the revolutionaries who would free us all from the military-industrial complex through freedom of information. That's changed just a bit now, hasn't it? There are a lot of Nobel laureates on the board for the BAS. Of course, the executive chair is former California Governor Jerry Brown. That's right, folks, the head of the board is good old Governor Moonbeam himself. Go on their website and look at the members of the Science and Security Board for yourself. Most are scientists, and some are politicians, and some are journalists, but every current member is a progressive. And again, I have to point out timing. Every January, the BAS releases the updated position of the Doomsday Clock. That's just in time to influence the campaign season in American politics in the three years out of four when significant elections will occur. That's right. First the primary year, then the presidential year, then a year off, then the midterms. Should we do something to protect the environment? Yes. I've always thought that proper stewardship is appropriate. Surprised? Don't be. I love the outdoors and nature documentaries. I check on the status of fisheries and the populations of whales as they continue to recover from centuries of commercial whaling. I live well away from major cities, partially because of the lack of open green spaces and partially because I just can't stand the stench of concentrated humanity. Can we just abandon all fossil fuel usage? No. Over 90% of the world's energy comes from fossil fuels and biofuels, the primary replacements for fossil fuels. Only 26% of the world's electrical generation capacity is from renewable sources. It's physically impossible to maintain civilization as we know it without investing the equivalent of all global economic output into switching everything into renewables for the next several years. 
and refitting every form of transportation with non-combustion powered drives. This is the work of decades, not just years, and the deadlines for these changes must reflect that. Alarmism about the environment after literal decades of inaccurate alarmist predictions just won't get the job done. Do I think that we should do something about nuclear proliferation? Absolutely. But we have to face reality. There are nations which don't have nukes yet who are striving to obtain them. And these nations are run by tyrants and despots. They don't care that we view their violations of existing treaties with alarm. They don't even care that we view their treatment of women and other minorities as despicable. We have agreements which they gleefully violate using funds which we provided them to further their agenda. The first step to taking them to task isn't a stern frown from us. It's to state publicly that we repudiate the agreement that we made with them and will hold them accountable by denying them access to any outside trade. We have to back that stance with pointed demonstrations that we have the capacity to absolutely flatten their country if they still don't get the message. And we have to show that we not only can, but will do it. That is what the president is doing right now. I know that it's scary. It scares me. But bullies deep down are very frightened people. The best way to get them to stop long enough to show them a better way is to show them that you won't back down and that fighting you is a seriously bad idea. As for cybersecurity, we need better protections. But this is a rapidly evolving environment. The life cycle for processors to double their processing speed is less than 18 months. We are approaching the singularity. Ask any computer scientist. Nearly every country is talking about high-speed broadband internet access for everyone, or they are attempting to block out as much of the internet as they possibly can. We need more secure applications which allow people to maintain their privacy and their free access to information without leaving every bit of recoverable data in the hands of those who would sell us to the highest bidder. And yes, I'm talking about big tech here. They can, and do, track everything about everyone who logs on. And so far, no one has come up with a real solution to this. That data is available for the unscrupulous to access through data breaches. Honestly, which one of us hasn't experienced the loss of our data to a security breach? It might be more effective to keep that data from being aggregated in the first place. The threats would have to come after data individually if there was no big online collections for them to access, and making all that data tracking illegal would be a good start. Now, as far as 100 seconds from midnight goes, well, it's a symbolic statement of the alarmist position of the BAS. We don't need more alarmism, and we don't need another round of the blame game. We need solutions. Real, practical solutions. If the experts provide actual, functional, practical solutions, then maybe we can start trusting their expertise again.